How is it going on everyone and welcome to my first video on the channel. Um, I've been meaning to get back to creating content and sort of design tutorials and videos for quite some time but for various reasons I've basically just been putting it off. <laughs> I don't know why but it's finally kind of got to the point where I, I want to get back into it. I've uh, invested a little bit of money and time into getting uh, equipment and sort of my assets together and now's the time so in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to create realistic looking shadows and highlights uh, on your football cutouts or renders uh, if that's what you want to call those and um, yeah it's going to be quite a quick tutorial and i'm also going to be showing you a couple of little little techniques that i use whilst uh, doing this process as well uh, and on the screen now you'll see we'll be basically taking your renders from looking like this to this which is a pretty good upgrade in my opinion and um, so yeah before we get into the video if I could ask you guys to drop a like down below and um, also subscribe if you want to see more videos and then obviously comment down below of what kind of ideas and videos you want to see in the future and I'll definitely get around to creating those if I can um, and uh, yeah let's get into it So to begin with, as you can see on our canvas, we've just got the plain mount cut out with just a little bit of a background. Um, one thing I want to point out is the canvas size. I usually work in 2000 by 2500 pixels with a 300 DPI um, setting on that. It just kind of results in a nice, clean and crispy image. You don't really want to be going any smaller than that because you will lose quality, especially now with all the higher quality displays. Uh, and you don't really want to be going anything above that as well because the difference isn't really noticeable and performance can actually drop quite a bit if you go um, a little bit bigger than that. So I think that's kind of, kind of sweet spot uh, for working with these sort of designs. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing we'll probably do is add this light source. So it's quite easy with this one because um, there's not many dark shadows on mount apart from obviously under his uh, armpits and in areas kind of covered by the light which works quite well that's why i picked this sort of cutout uh, for this example but yeah this light source is basically um, a new layer we get quite a large brush with hardness set to zero percent size i think i had it on around i think around 3000 pixels ish and we're just going to color pick a nice light blue and basically what you want to do is you want to just make a dot up here change the blending mode to linear dodge and i think this one well, well yeah 100 percent. so yeah that's how you get your light source and with this you kind of want to determine what angle the light is coming from so i like to add my light source first and then it helps me to visualize where the shadows and the highlights are going to fall on the render and um, so yeah first of all though we're going to convert the render to a smart object and i'm just going to add a little bit of a camera raw filter to it uh, maybe a little bit of sharpening just to kind of make those details pop, a little bit of texture, slightly contrast, but we'll bring the shadows up a little bit and maybe a little bit of vibrance as well. Uh, and that's a nice little, nice difference. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with the shadows. So you wanna click this little button down here uh, with the, all these adjustment layers and you wanna bring up the exposure layer. When you bring this up, you want to make sure that it's clipped to only mount. You don't want it to affect anything else on the canvas. So you want to keep hold of option uh, or alt, I think on windows and you literally just click the layer underneath it and then it only affects that layer. So now you just want to double click on this and I usually bring the exposure down to around minus six or minus five, depending on uh, what kind of works uh, for your piece. And now you want to go into the mask of the adjustment layer change your color to black and basically just fill it all in so it hides it and then now basically this is where the uh, the tedious or fun part as some of you might say uh, begins make a i'd probably say 175 brush for this um, and you want to work in white what this will do is it will show the highlighted um the shadow area sorry on this piece uh, where you basically paint over and what i do is i usually bring the opacity down to around 10 uh, yeah 10 percent, something like that just to make really kind of subtle adjustments to the cutout so this is basically what we'll start doing i usually start with the the armpit areas because obviously there's going to be quite a bit of shadow here and then um, all the highlighted bits are going to be basically around on this edge so i'm going to paint a little bit of dark um uh, 
on his chest as well, on this side of his neck, maybe a little bit of this side of his face. This area is gonna be quite a bit darker because it's covered by his head. Uh, then again, you wanna to add to his armpits, a little bit on the bottom of his arm, this side of his fist as well, because that's not facing to the direct, direct sunlight. Again, this fist as well, maybe a little bit behind here. And then also on his legs, you want to make sure that these sort of areas are, let me just double check, that's fine. These areas are covered right here. So you just want to keep on painting basically the areas where you think there's going to be shadows and you can keep building on and building those up basically until uh, you're kind of happy with the outcome. I'm not, this brush was a little bit weird. It wasn't really painting right, but yeah. Um, a very light brush will work for this and I'm also going to add a bit more shadow to this side and maybe a little bit to his foot here like so and this side of his chest as well be careful obviously going around his fist you don't want to get too much uh, shadows on there but now if we zoom out you can see that you can see the shadows already and if we take this off you can see the areas that have been affected and now it's the same sort of thing um, what you'll be doing with the highlights. So again, create a new adjustment layer exposure. This time you want to whack the exposure up to around plus four. And again, fill the layer mask with black. But you want to move this above the shadows. You always want to have the shadows on the bottom layer. And again, switch to a white brush. But this time you're going to be painting in the highlights. So again, the areas that you think will be affected. So his arm here, this side of his body with his leg, this side of his foot, a little bit here behind because the light should be hitting that as well. Uh, there, a little bit of his arm here because the light's going to be shining through. A little bit of his face, maybe a little bit of his shoulder and his fist. So something like that. And now you've got a nice highlight layer, which is working well already. But what you can see is a little bit of discoloration on his leg and on his skin. Uh, what I do to kind of counteract that is I make a new adjustment layer. You want to go into selective color, uh, have the colors on yellows, and then basically bring the yellows down by about minus 35%. And you can see the difference here now. It kind of makes the skin tones more um, orangey and red, and it gets rid of that like yellowy green, green tint. So I'm quite happy with that. And then one more thing that you can do is you can add some curves adjustment layers. So we're gonna make a curves adjustment layer for the shadows. So you wanna make sure you've got the shadows selected. Now you wanna make a new layer, curves. And then basically what you wanna do is you wanna drag this uh, side of the curve down slightly. That increases the shadows. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep hold of Option or Alt and basically just drag the layer mask onto this layer, which will replace it. And then now it will only affect the areas which have got the um, the new shadows essentially that you painted on. And that's probably a little bit too much. So I'm gonna bring this down to around 65%. Uh, I'm quite happy with that now. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the highlights. So we're gonna make a new curves adjustment layer. Whack this side of it up. As you can see, it's affecting everything, but that's because it's not clipped to mount. So we're gonna bring this down and then above the highlights and again keeping hold of option or alt you want to drag this layer mask onto there and now as you can see it affects that um, layer mask only i might bring this up slightly more and there we go and that's i think pretty much i think we made the highlights slightly more harsh um, than the example that i've given you but we also added i think a little bit of a hue um, adjustment layer so again just above the selective color i'm going to make a hue and saturation adjustment layer because he's kind of looking a little bit washed out and what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase saturation more from this preset menu but again this is slightly too much so i'm just going to bring this down to around 75 percent and again just to show you the difference i'm just going to duplicate this layer and group all these so this is what the before was and this is the after so it's quite a drastic difference and it does make uh, your work look significantly better so um yeah that's it really um, if you guys enjoy this video like i was saying before make sure to drop a like down below it does really um 
help me out a bit because it means you guys enjoy my content and I will carry on bringing it out. Uh, obviously subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and in the comments drop any sort of um, suggestions of videos that you guys want to see in the future. Uh, but for today that's it, so I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.